too short. Too short is a uh, Shorty the Pimp 92. This came out. I mean, this has Shorty the Pimp intro. My kid just woke up. I'm doing this real early in the morning. In the Trunk is amazing. I know that whole entire song. This is a classic album from Too Short. Always rapped about what he grew up with. Slinging tapes. Camp Below. Now I'm going to start up talking faster now because my kids uh, are awake. Camp Below, Uptime Saturday Night. Now, Crystal Carrington, or what is it called? Lucini, Lu, uh, Lucini a.k.a. This Is It. What? Lucini's Pull Up From The Sky. That song is amazing. Crystal Carrington is amazing. There's a couple dope albums on here. Most people slept on this. They did have a second album after this, but it was complete trash. It's probably in here somewhere, but we'll skip through that. This album, not too bad. Obviously, it's got that sweet J.J. Uh, Walker, Good Times fucking vibe going on to it with the artwork. Tupac Outlaws. This Still I Rise. This is a great album. It's Tupac plus the Outlaws. It's, I consider it more of a an Outlaws album. I mean, I know it's because it, it's, it's more featured like that. It's supposed to be, but most people sleep on this one, but it is a Tupac album. It's, it's, it's like equally both of theirs, but that's a great picture that, you know, you never got, you never got to solve when you bought the album until that, like, because the internet wasn't really big. You couldn't just find unreleased photos. So that was a sweet ass. What the fuck are you just taking a picture of me after the concert, sweating my balls off picture of Pac. But still I rise. Great. This is what is this? Letter to the President from Still I Rise. Secrets of War. You either ride with us or collide with us. This is simple as that. For man, they're bl uh, black. Oh man, there's so many. Hell for a hustler. There, there's there's tons of great songs on this. The Yin Gang Twins. Nope. Single. What is this? I don't even know what that is. Some burn CD. Oh, we're trying to go. Uh, uh, look at this shit. Uh, Rewind DVD. That's classic. Crucial Conflict. Chicago. Some of Chicago's finest. Uh, they had Hey. Stuff like that. I mean, the, not, if you were a 90s Chicago fan, you know, they made a couple of great albums. Chirac Stand Up. If you're from the Chicago, you got to know who Crucial Conflict is. Another Tupac, Me Against the World. Mm -hmm. Me Against the World. Mm, right before he went into jail. And this is right before he got super gangster. The, uh, there's some good. It, it, it's all right. It's I, I was more. Uh, I was more this Pac, definitely. I wanted that sign me a contract on a fucking toilet paper roll type fucking album and this is the hardest shit of all time this is the first double disc solo artist rap album of all time this was nobody did it master p has a double album the of down south hustlers that came out in 95 but this is the first double album of all time by a solo artist and it proves why tupac is throwing up you think he's throwing up a west side no he's throwing up a win because that's what this album is a fucking amazing triple quadruple platinum fucking selling pootie pie numbers uh this is after he died came out with this there's a lot of hidden stuff in this a seven day theory i mean this is one of my favorite albums of all time it's hard it's when he switched well, after it's that's when they turned into the new and untouchable death row record so they knew something was going on machiavelli you know what i'm saying there was a lot of hidden stuff in this but obviously he's probably passed away even if he's not wherever Pac is I hopefully he's chilling, but I'm just saying he's still making money regardless. But, you know, this is the, right after he died and all the shit started to happen. It became the untouchable death row record. So there's there's like there's, there's stuff hidden in like the fucking fingerprints and shit. Like you, if you get a magnifying glass, like dude, there's so much stuff on this album that's hidden inside and out. Be a Sherlock Holmes and go look into that shit yourself. I did. I used to print shit out on paper back in the library at school about it. Like, I, I, I fucking researched that shit like a CSI investigation. That shit was funny as I speak with gloves on my hand so I don't leave fingerprints on these albums. Spice One, Black Bossolini. There's actually a Tupac, uh, what is that, dedicated to Thug and Me. The and Me, and when I walk on by. And that's dedicated to Tupac. This came out in 97, right after he died. I love this album. There's a couple of classic tracks on it. Let's keep going. Oh, D-Shot, another uh, member of the Click, you know, E-40's Sick With It record crew. Uh, look at that fucking Hummer, and that's a, that's an amazing album. Six Figures, this is one of, this is like, what, his second, third, second album? I can't remember, but uh, it's not it's not that bad. It, it It's pretty average, but for back then, I mean, it was definitely worth the pickup. Born Again, uh, you know, post after Biggie died, release stuff, the, trying to throw uh, cash money in it, which is, I hope you N-word sleep with the BG and the Hot Timers is, believe it or not, that for the time, those Manny Fresh beats and and, and Biggie rapping on that, like that, that's some hard ass shit. Go listen to Hope hope You uh, Trigger Sleep by the Hot Boys and Big Timers. That song is hard as fuck. Look at that. That's me listening to it with my mouth open and drooling. Here we go. Oh, Violent Femmes. Oh, man. What you know about that? Some bonus tracks on it. 
We're not talking. What if Spencer Davis? What's happening here? Those aren't wraps. What else we got going on? We're getting through it, guys. I'm, oh, we're almost hitting 45 minutes. This might be an hour or something. I'll have to chop it up in different sections. Here we go. Two box uh, until the end of time. Not too bad. I, look, they had to blur out the king symbol because they didn't want to fucking have to pay him. Tupac's got no tattoos on. He did have one, but they photoshopped it out. You could tell. Um, there's a couple. Ballad of a Dead Soldier's not bad. There's a couple. There's a couple dope tracks on this, but I mean, it it, it wasn't. It was more uh, more political, happy Pac. There is some stuff on it, but it, it, I wasn't too a big fan of it. Oh man, Papa Zaville. Don't. But nobody knows who this fucking guy is. Look at him sitting on a fucking cinder brick. This dude is from Texas. This is my name, Matt. This dude is from Texas. This is from 2000. Papa Seville, dude. This. This album is hard as hell, and I think I bought it for 50 cents at some fucking swap meet. I'm Papa Seville, dude. Papa this shit in a CD player and listen to it. It's fucking dope. Uh, man, I, I, another thing. I love No Limit. I love Death Row. I also love Rap-A-Lot Records. Uh, the Fifth War Boys, this, there's a couple of dope out, uh, songs on this. They were, they were rap a Lot's going to be a whole other thing we could talk about. Obviously, Scarface was on, you know. The Ghetto Boys was their big thing back in the day, but this, this album's not too bad. It's from '97. They got way stuff. Oh, there's another Grateful Dead. There's a Case I'm Missing You. Southwest Riders double album. That's E40 and the and all the fucking. This is a double disc. It's got you know, uh, three times crazy and, and shit like that on. There's there's tons of people on here. Sam Quinn, Messy Mar, Be Legit, Richie Rich. I mean, there's tons. Mystical. It is. This is from '97 too. This is a great double album. If you haven't heard of any of this, go check it out old school all right here's oh black haze i know this album in and out so i got this for a dollar at a flea market and this is from 1996 97 this one's from 98 so tupac has died if tupac died in 96 obviously so this was probably recorded in 97 he sounds exactly well not exactly like tupac but very similar so i don't know if it was a gimmick to get him to sell records but he's actually spitting on a lot of this. And he had an EKG was the record label. Like this is a, a crazy, insane produced album. And the dude sounds just like Tupac. And I took it to school. I used to blow people's minds and they would all think it was Tupac back then. But whoever made this black case, he did come out with a second album, which was complete garbage. And that's why I don't even own it. I threw it in the trash. This album, amazing. I have so many of them songs memorized. SWV, oh, oh let me tell you what. They were talking for a girl group back in the day. I still listen to SWV all the time, but this is some... If you listen to this album now, this is 92, man. If you listen to this album now, it sounds like they recorded this shit in a closet. It's so low budget. You can just tell it was them putting their heart and soul into this album. I think one of that chick married Eddie George, the football player, the running back from Ohio State. And then there was like a big conspiracy back in the day if one of these chicks was like her, if she was a fucking... Is that Coco? Was a man and all that stuff. Dude, that was so funny. I'm pretty sure she's not a man. Was she had baseball cleats on? That's not safe to be walking. What is she doing? Doing construction and baseball cleats? Man, she could break an ankle on that. All right, here we go. Oh, my God. My boy from Tennessee, G-Unit. Young Buck, straight out of Cashville. I love this album. I mean, like I said, I'm from Tennessee. He he was one of my... I mean, 50 Cent, obviously, was probably my favorite out of G-Unit. The game was pretty nice, too. But Young Buck, this album is amazing. This isn't the one where his face... I, I wish I had the cover with him with his gold teeth in that one but i don't man look at that you get neck problems with a chain that big G -g 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 -g. closing the case here we go oh and here's one of the greatest rap albums of all time folks 1995 e40 in a major way dustin and disgusted sprinkle me the bumble chip i mean the dude the intro everything about this album is amazing e40 that's that still needs to be your face of this day because this shit is nasty as fuck Go get this album. Go get it. Listen to it. It's amazing. It's my first or second favorite album of all time. The Ghetto Laws. This song, this is only the, the promo single, which these dudes, I think this song got featured in the soundtrack some point in time, but I bought this promo before anybody knew about this. This this song is get the Ghetto Laws. This song is dope as fuck. Go look this song track up. That's all you need. You don't need to get an album. I don't even know if they ever came out with an album. If they did... I don't know what happened to it. I never got it. But when I picked this up for 50 cents or something like that, and it's this track, it's amazing. El Berna, this is a burn copy. Uh, this is when uh, Lazy went solo by himself after he's still on Ruthless. This is There's a couple of good tracks on this. Obviously, it's a burn copy. I didn't want to pay for it. I only, I only really fucked with Bone as a group. There's solo stuff I was pretty sketchy about. But Crazy Bone, um, I fucked with Crazy Bone. La Lazy, they're like the Ninja Turtles, dude. 
Lazy was like Leonardo. And then I, I don't know who. Uh, Raphael was probably Wish and fucking. Mm, I don't know the other two. The, the other two you could pick between. But he, I, I never cared for Lazy that much. I was always a crazy and busy fan. What is this? A myst There's a mystical blank case. Tupac Better Days. Yeah, it, it has, it's been better days. But there's definitely probably like at least eight tracks on this double album that are amazing. Oh, 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 speaking of the Goosebumps, like I mentioned earlier, there is a song, where, which one is it, Street Fame? Uh, it might be Street Fame. Let me look at it real quick. So oh, it's on Change Man. Tupac's verse on Change Man gives me goosebumps to this day, just like Twister does on the other song. I love it. Uh, here's another, this means raw promo that I picked up back in the day. Look, it's got Allen Iverson when Allen Iverson was trying to be a rapper. That's pretty funny. Dirty Hit the Flow was another thing that Dirty is one of the most underrated groups of all time. Their shit, their production, the way they rap, the Pimpin' the Gangster is one of the greatest albums out there. It's in here somewhere. I'll find it, but very slow. Oh, Death Row's Greatest Hits. You can tell this looks like it's been electrocuted. This thing is beat to shit. I've listened to this so much back in the day. It's insane. doesn't even have a back in it. It came out of my car and I don't know where it went. We're almost done, guys. We're almost an hour into it here. Steady Mobbin. I have a huge poster. I have so many posters of No Limit stuff. It's insane. This album came out in 98. It's not that great. It was their, what, second? Second? Is this not? It's not. Yeah, it is 98. Their first one was 97. Their first one's good. This one, not so much. Skull Durger. I mean, this was like his third or fourth album. Mm, we'll just keep it moving. He was on another Fifth Ward Weeby, another guy. This album's not too bad. But we're not here to talk about him either. Oh, oh, now here we go. We're getting into the, the more rare No Limit. We got Master P, uh, West Coast Bad Boys. Now, uh, this one is the 19... It originally was released in 94. This was in the 97 release of it, which is still hard to find. All, there's probably like $2,000 worth of rap albums in here, to be honest with you. But uh, I do have the original one of that somewhere. We'll get to it. Mr. Marcello, he was on No Limit. After his his No Limit out was pretty nice. This is his one where he's on Tough Guy Records, his own record label. Not too good. A couple, you know, No Limit rappers on there. Obviously why I picked it up. But not on No Limit, but his one that was with No Limit and Tough Guy, I do like. There's a, good, a lot of songs on that. The Gambino Family, it's... No, I, I liked what they did with the artwork and this and that. There's a couple decent listenable tracks, but nothing... Even the CD right now, if you probably look it up, it's probably a $30, $40 CD which is insane to me because you'll never listen to it. But if you're a collector of No Limit, you still got it. I try, you try to get every single one of them. Mm -mm -mm. Here we go. We're getting to the nitty gritty here. Oh, this is all former No Limit stuff. There's Fiend, Full Blooded, and The Hound, and all that stuff. His solo stuff, not on No Limit. Uh, that's not on No Limit. That's after Fiend left and did his own thing, which is on his record label, Fiend Entertainment. Looks a lot, looks a lot like the Machiavelli uh, logo, which is pretty cool, but it says Fiend. Uh, Soldier Slim. Oh, this is a this is a pretty rough, ter uh, rare one to find. Obviously, Soldier Slim got murdered. I think in front of his like mom's house or some shit like that. But um, this this album's the old Cutthroat Committee. And the, th 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 there's a couple R8 ones on here, but this is not uh, not my favorite Soldier Slim album. Oh, and then look at Master P. Dude, he was so far ahead of the game. Look at that shit. Holy, is that, what is that? Is that a TV building to that bitch? I mean, Master P was so, look at that, reflected the, the uh, he was just so far ahead of his time. Even though this album, he probably put the most money into, it ain't all that great. I mean, he, I think he spent more time producing the, the imagery on it and the artwork than he did actually making it a good album. Now, here it is. The This is the first, pro probably rap double album that I could think of. I mean, this is a, I have a plaque. A RIA plaque of this as well. I have a lot of No Limit shit. Uh, this is 95 and it's a double disc, but this is before Soldier Slim was even Soldier Slim. He was Magnolia Slim. I mean, this is old school shit. No Limit at its finest. That's King George up in there with the fucking money and Master P, the two people that are on the tank, I believe. And look at that flat ass. About as flat as that low rider hitting the switches. All right, here we go. Drop it. Low Mystical second album on No Limit. Mm, ghetto Fabulous? I think not. Not a big fan of this one. There's not too much on it. Not going to talk about it, so we're out of here. Uh, Skull Diggory, I think this was his second album. Uh, the Wicked 98, what is this from? 98, yes, 98. His first one I like. These Wicked Streets, not so much. Look at that. They could have got a, a much more fearsome dog. That thing's photoshopped a fuck big time. 
And who shot that police car up? He, he didn't notice all that stuff going on. He didn't give a fuck. He said, there's skulls chasing me. He's skullduggery. Mercedes bent over with a fucking camel toe and her little ass cheek hanging out right there. And her, like, she got a big ass face too. Uh, rear end. Dang. That's, that's some provocative shit. And she got a stogie in her mouth. Uh, I don't even care about, I don't like female, I'm not, right, let me, let me rephrase that. I like certain female rappers. Lauren Hill is the greatest female rapper of all time. The cautious daughters from back in the day were dope. Boss was dope. There was some MC light. I mean, Queen Latifah, I'm not saying there wasn't good ra girl rappers, but like the bootleg one, there was a girl called Psychodrama. She was a girl rapper from uh, Chicago and she was, she fucking spits dude back in the day. She still probably raps for all I know. Uh, not a, I didn't care for that album. Didn't, it was, I didn't care for it. Let's keep going. Uh, here's Little Italy. This dude, I mean, he had the sex appeal. He was in the funk mob back in the day from uh, Ca California. The, the, but then he ended up signing to No Limit. And I love the artwork. I like what they got going on there. They got the Rolls Royce with the fucking mounds of money. Apparently, he's over here and he's over here and he's right there and he's right there. That's a lot of Little Italy. Uh, only bought it because I needed it for the collection. But... I have listened to it. I don't remember shit off of it, so obviously not very memorable. Oh, there's the West Coast Bad Boys. Now, this is the original. No, it's not. It's another exact copy of the 97 release, so we're not going to talk about it. Aha! There's the original one right there. The 94 fucking release that I got back in the day of West Coast Bad Boy compilation. Amazing masterpiece. You knew how to bring all the fucking West Coast together back in the day. Before you moved, when you were doing the Bay Area shit and you moved, I mean, dude, this had everybody on it. Get Low Players, Coognut, Rest in Pete. There's so many probably dead people on here. That's insane. King, look, I mean, Easy. I have that, I have that album in another play, at another stack of CDs. Sibo, there's Sefta Gaffala, The Delinquents, Dangerous Dane. RBL Posse was another group. Man, there's so many amazing people that came out of the bay area back in the day 94 right there now i think this is well this is master please please clean getaway this this is no barcode this is before his mama's bad boy i'm pretty sure this is it's got the real untouchables to tru before they even abbreviated uh it's very old school no limit because i'm it's just it's just old as shit I think it's what 92 91 i don't remember what when this came out but if you listen to it now it's very old school nwa ish little kim no dallas there's a dallas effect microphone master there, there's a remix of microphone master on here i can't remember which one it is i have it saved in my playlist but uh it's way better than the original coolio a lot of people are uh we're sleeping on Coolio back in the day, and you know now he's now he's a complete you know out out of his mind. Got a, you know ICP still trying still trying to still trying to hang on to every little hair that he has left on his head. But this album for '94, I mean, dude, there's there's literally probably I mean, dude, like four of these made it to the radio and had a video made for it. But that was the original name of the album. It was called In the Closet. They, they ended up changing it to uh, It Takes a Thief. When I was younger, I always thought he was looking in the rim, a hubcap of an old car. And then, so, and then like five years later, I realized those were fucking barbed wire because I was an idiot and he was breaking out of jail. I don't know why I just thought of that. But this album, I do I do like this album. Coolio definitely put it down on that one. Black Sheep, look at this shit, 92. This is a funny ass. They, their second album was terrible. But uh, A Wool in Sheep's Clothing, this album is classic 90s hip hop fucking rap. Everybody knows they played it in so many so many video commercials of you can get with this so you can get with that i mean they're not even wait but it, dude there's so many tracks on here there's a lot of good tracks and what, what is the one but in not in the meantime the, is it the intro i can't remember the intro is funny as fuck ma you brought my fucking egg yolk all right here we go oh uh, tupac now obviously i i love tupac this is before tupac i mean this is I mean, holler if you hear me. This is this is early Tupac, and you can tell the beats, the way it's produced. This isn't, you know, gangster Tupac. It is a little bit, but I get around. It's still, if you don't, if if summertime happens, wherever you are, and you don't have the windows down playing, I get around by Tupac. You don't like rap music. That's real fucking talk. Biggie's first album. I don't even have to talk about that. You are, I mean, you you already know what it is. Way too many fucking intros and skits in this. 
but still, I don't even need to talk about it.